Hello everyone and welcome down the Bitcoin rabbit hole. I'm Roxy and today I'm going to help you set up your Trezor Model 1. So it's a hardware wallet, it's a cold storage solution. So it's amazing and that's what you should use if you want to store any amount of Bitcoin between 1000 to above basically. Uh, if you go past 10,000, you will need to add some passphrase that's not going to be covered in this video. The tutorial is going to last more or less 5 to 10 minutes. You will need one device, a new one, not used, a computer with internet, two pieces of paper. Ideally, you should print the template I provide in the description. It's going to make it way simpler for the future. And two folders. We can straight up plug in. So I didn't do an unboxing because I find the unboxing idea completely stupid. Like, why would you want me to open a box in front of you? But just be aware, you can destroy the Trezor box. Uh, anyway, straight up, they're going to set to go to trezor.io slash start. So that's what we are going to do. We have already a Trezor and we are doing a Trezor Model 1. We are going to press create a new wallet. We will cover the recover an existing wallet on another video. We're going to accept the term. We don't have any choice anyway. And uh, we are going to be launched into the menu. Before we start receiving or sending money, we need to do the backup creation. That is the private key. So a couple of rules. I've talked a lot about private key in this channel. You probably all know what it is now, but just let me repeat it one last time. Hide every camera. Do not make it digital. Write in a paper using ink and do not share it. What we're going to write right now, which is the private key, that is the most important. That is your Bitcoin. This is literally your money. You will be writing down 24 words on paper and that will represent your Bitcoin. It sounds weird the first time you do it, but then it really makes sense when you think about it. Anyway, they're going to show you words on the device. So here's the first one for you. And I'm simply going to write them down on the template in order uh, with the best handwriting I can possibly do. Uh, and I'm going to do that for the 24 words. Let's go. Roxy from the future, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you for supporting my work, all your shares and like on Twitter and YouTube really means a lot. I'm producing all of that by myself in French, Spanish and English. So if you have any feedback or you want me to go more in depth into one topic, please tell me and I will be happy to do it. Thanks for your support. And here we go. Now we can just verify them. If one is wrong, you won't get access to the money. That's the whole point, eh? So make sure you got it right. You have no second chance here. Uh, this is the tricky part about Bitcoin. This is why Bitcoin adoption is hard. This is why it's obscure to most people. This is why it's difficult to use. This is why people are afraid. Uh, it's because we have to do that. But it's because sovereignty with, comes with responsibility. And uh, you just have to do it anyway. So the private key is on paper. That is amazing. So now we're going to set up a pin because we don't want the device to be unprotected. You need to understand that the pin and the device give access to the money and the private key give access to the money. Two different means to access. We're going to set a new pin. Uh, for the pin, it's a system like that. I don't know if you know what I mean by that. Uh, basically, the digit that you need to pick on the screen are, connect are here, right? Uh, if you know what it is, it's pretty obvious. Uh, I'm going to pick a random pin. Again, pin roll, guys. Do not, use your, do not use your birthday. Do not use the same as your portal or front door. Do not use the same as your phone. And do not use the same as always. If someone has access to that device and knows the pin that you always use, he can unlock the money if you used it here. So do not do that. Uh, for my case, it's going to be uh, a diagonal. So it's going to be 6751872. And I'm going to write it down on the piece of paper. And we are good. They're going to ask for a name. Uh, so we can put a name. So it's going to be easier for us. We're going to put a Bitcoin rabbit hole. Um, that's the English tutorial I'm making. Because all my content is in three languages, by the way. And that's going to be a tutorial. Here we go. We do not, uh, you can put it in a bootmark. It's going to be easier for you if you want. And I'm going to skip that stage. And that's it. The device is ready. It can be used. One small trick or advice I can give you. Uh, when you've uh, opened the box, there were some stickers. Cut one of the white sticker and uh, put it here and write down what that device is going to be for. So let's say it's just for your family, then write family and the name. Uh, if it's for the holidays, 
or if it's like part of a multi scheme team, uh, in that case, like write what it is. Why? So if you don't have access to electricity or internet and you cannot plug the device, you know what it represents because if you go and check your security and you just have that b black device and you don't know what it represents, it can be really frustrating. So just write down what it is on the back. Uh, that's my piece of advice for you. Anyway, we are done. We can put the device and the computer away and focus on the private key. I'm going to repeat myself, guys, but that piece of money, of paper, represents the money. So if I put, put 1,000 bucks or 5,000 bucks in that device, that piece of paper gives access to that money. So immediately, you're going to make a copy. Why do we want a copy? We don't make a copy so it's easier to get stolen. We make a copy because if you lose one, you lose your money. So by making a copy, you mitigate that risk. This paper can burn, this house can be compromised, this location can be fucked. Uh, I have a backup somewhere else where I can recover my money safely. And that is absolutely awesome. That's what you want. So we make a copy without thinking. We do not procrastinate. We make it right now, right here. We're going to write at the top copy two out of two and here copy one out of one, out of two. Here we go. We got the copies and that's amazing. We're going to store them in two different folders. So it's all nice and pretty because you don't want that piece of paper to be lying around. Uh, imagine it was 2000 bucks. Would you just leave 2000 bucks anywhere in your house? Probably not. So you're not going to do the same with Bitcoin. You're just going to, oh, here we go, put them in folders. In addition, uh, I've uh, created some A4 tutorial recap. Uh, it's literally just a process step by step on what that thing represents, how you can get access and recover the wallet. The idea is that if someone steals that, he steals the money. Uh, so it doesn't really matter that he has a tutorial. But if it's you or your kids or your family that has access to that, uh, because something happened to you and it's part of the inheritance plan, then it can be pretty useful to have a tutorial. So I'm just adding a quick tutorial. It's free. You can download it on my website or in the link uh, below. Uh, I'll mean, just do that. I find it, I find it useful. Um, it doesn't cost anything. It's still just a piece of paper to print. And uh, if it can uh, help uh, the one I love, if something happened to me, then that's good for me. Uh, to copy. And here we go. We have now two folders. I'm going to be storing both folders in a different location. So if one location can compromise, I can still have access to the second one. So I'm going to store this one in my house, somewhere secret and safe. Uh, I don't know where. I don't really care. I will just think of somewhere which, where no one has ever access and keep it secret. The second one is going to be stored in a separate location. So if my house gets compromised, if I cannot go back there, if the house burn, I still have the money somewhere else. That is what you must do. You must separate those two folders and put them in two different locations. The final stage is going to be to create an inheritance plan. That's chapter six. You can go check it out. It's going to take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but it's really going to be the last stage of your Bitcoin security. In the meanwhile, if you want to learn how that device works, how to sign a transaction, how to send money, how to receive money, how to create a passphrase or multisig or recover that wallet, it's going to be on another video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more details about everything I just discussed, please check the full course in the description. There's a whole course on my website too, thebitcoinrabbithole.com, uh, where you will uh, understand exactly what you need to do. Uh, if you're going to move past 10K, uh, you should definitely add a passphrase. It's going to make a big difference in your security because like you can feel it. Uh, if someone have access to that, he has access to the money. With a passphrase, the person will need this plus a passphrase. It really increases that security. Anyway, I'm Roxy and I see you next week. Bye bye. Take care.